uh, resolution 4267 um, having to do with um, uh, the Caltrain funding issues. So uh, for that, um, we're going to turn to Ann Richmond for um, uh, any uh, comments on the staff report itself. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I'm not Ann Richmond, uh, but I was going to say a few words before she gets started. Uh, first, I wanted to um, thank all of you for making time for this uh, special meeting and coming to the special commission meeting. For those of you that have been on the commission a while, you know we really don't call special commission meetings very often, so I really appreciate everyone's attendance. And I just wanted to um, you know, give you a sense of why we thought it was, uh, staff felt it was important to call this special uh, meeting. Uh, there were several reasons. Uh, one, um, you know, the significance of the Peninsula Corridor electrification project uh, for the region and for the state in terms of our transit expansion strategy and our early investment in high-speed rail. Also, the, tr the time-critical nature of the Federal Transit Administration's request for policy board action. And um, lastly, but certainly not least, uh, cons the consequence to the project, um, should the region not be able to secure the over half a billion dollars in federal investment uh, that has been included in the project's uh, funding plan. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of context for the special meeting, and I'm going to turn it over to Ann Richmond, who's going to really cover uh, the details of the request before you today. Thanks. Hey, good morning. I am Ann Richmond, the Director of Programming and Allocations here. This item recommends a contingent commitment of $50 million to support the Caltrain electrification project should it experience cost overruns or revenue shortfalls, and in order to support execution of a full funding grant agreement, or FFGA, with the Federal Transit Administration. So I'll start by providing some background. The electrification project is a $1.9 billion project to electrify the Caltrain line from San Francisco to San Jose. In 2012 and again in 2016, the project's funding partners agreed to memoranda of understanding outlining funding for the project. The funding plan includes funds from the three JPB partners, MTC, and the state. The 2016 funding plan also includes $647 million in FTA funds from the Core Capacity Program, which is a relatively new part of New Starts. Caltrain has applied to FTA for the Core Capacity funds. As part of its evaluation of Caltrain's application, FTA conducted a financial review and found that the funding plan did not have the capacity to withstand potential cost overruns or revenue shortfalls beyond the $316 million of contingency that was already included. I should also note that the project has already undergone numerous cost reviews and value engineering exercises and has several project and cost monitoring opportunities already established for the funding partners and for FTA. Nevertheless, Caltrain is seeking to demonstrate to FTA that it will have access to an additional 10% contingency or $200 million if needed and without having to seek further board actions. MTC and the three JPB partners have therefore been going to their boards to demonstrate that this $200 million is available to the project should it be needed. This brings us to the current actions. Last week, VTA and San Mateo boards approved a combined commitment of $200 million from their respective sales tax measures, $135 million from San Mateo and $65 million from VTA. This is expected to satisfy the FTA requirement. However, in order to get to equal shares of $50 million each among the three Caltrain partners plus MTC, San Francisco and MTC are each pledging, or in our case are requesting approval today, to pledge $50 million to pay back VTA and San Mateo if needed. So in other words, VTA and San Mateo are advancing the funds and San Francisco and MTC would repay them such that each partner ends up contributing equal shares up to $50 million. The San Francisco Transportation Authority Board approved their action last week as well. All of which, again, as a reminder, would only be if the project's regular contingency of $300 million is exhausted and additional funds were needed. Therefore, this item recommends a contingent commitment of $50 million in Regional Transportation <coughs> Improvement Funds, or RTIP, for this purpose. The RTIP funds would come from three sources. The first would be, is $31 million in an unprogrammed balance that would be available as a result of Alameda and Contra Costa counties repaying MTC for funding that MTC provided several years ago for the Caldecott Tunnel. 
The second would be $15 million that would be reprogrammed from a Bay Bridge access project, the Gateway Park, Park project. And finally, $4 million that would be reserved from future San Francisco, San Mateo, and Santa Clara County RTIP shares, since they're the three Caltrain partners. If ultimately the funds are not needed for the Caltrain project, the $31 million could be reprogrammed to another regional priority project, and the $15 million and the $4 million could be returned to their original purposes. The California State Transportation Agency is aware of the need for the contingency funds for Caltrain, and MTC would work with the state to implement this approach. This item is being brought to this special commission meeting because of the urgent need to satisfy FTA and to gain approval for the $647 million in federal funding. FTA is expected to release their funding recommendations any day, which would start a 30-day congressional review period. After that period ends in February, the new administration would be, would be responsible for signing the FFGA if no new issues or objections were raised. Getting the FFGA is also quite pressing due to the fact that Caltrain will have to convert their electrification contractors' limited notices to proceed into full notices to proceed by March 1st, or they would have to renegotiate extensions with the contractors. So there are multiple reasons why we felt that this item was extremely urgent. And therefore, I recommend the approval of MTC Resolution Number 4267, a contingent commitment of $50 million in RTIP funds, in order to obtain the significant and urgent approval from FTA. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions, first of all, before we entertain a motion. Uh, yes, Commissioner? Yes, thank you. As a new person, I'm learning all of these projects you've got going on. So can you describe in a little great, greater detail what the Gateway Park project is? Something to do with the bridge, you said, but what are they doing, widening things? Or uh, yeah, Good morning, Commissioners. Andrew Fremier, Deputy Executive Director of the Bay Area Toll Authority. Um, we've been working with uh, a lot of the regional partners in the area of the foot of the Eastern Bay Bridge terminus to try to develop a park area there. Um, in terms of removal of the Bay Bridge, Caltrans is giving some land to the East Bay Regional Parks to manage. And we're trying to take advantage of that land transfer, or at least the use of the land, and develop a, a regional access to the bike path and to the area in that um, uh, part of the bridge. So we're trying to connect the Mandela Parkway to the bridge path and then improve the area that will be transferred um, from Caltrans uh, in addition to some property that's being transferred by the Army, in addition to some Caltrans property that is uh, currently occupied uh, by an old building there that we've retrofit to, again, sort of put into public space. Okay. Thank you. It, it's got a significant funding gap, though, so I we're a long see. ways from uh, <laughs> developing a project there. All righty. Thank you. Uh, any, anybody else? Um, I have um, a, Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you, Commissioner. Go ahead. Um, I, I just want to thank MTC for all their work on this. Um, I know these things, it's sort of a very last minute thing, um, and I know it required a, a sort of an enormous effort, effort on behalf of staff. And I also want to thank um, San Mateo County Transportation Authority and VTA for sort of this kind of quick fix, um, which, uh, which is just incredibly important for this project to go ahead. And uh, so I'm, I'm very supportive of this. Uh, th thank you. Uh, let me, anybody else? Let me ask uh, a question or two, um, and then if there's more from the commission, I can come back to you. Um, first of all, I understand the, the timing issues, the significance of acting today, and the um, sort of the causation here, which is, you know, really seems to fall um, on high expectations uh, by FTA. Uh, as opposed to something that we created here. That said, um, the concerns I, I have really revolve around um, protecting ourselves from, from double pledging dollars. I appreciate very much the previous question, um, Commissioner, thanks, regarding, um, you know, I, th I would paraphrase the question is how important is the Gateway Park project? You know, and it, it, at some point, my concerns are twofold. I don't want to get in downstream on this, um, where given all of these pledges that have been made and resolutions, the other resolutions and, and our resolution aren't specific about which projects would be cannibalized um, to come up with this money. Um, they 
the resolutions speak to a delegation of, of authority that's very broad. Um, and even if you do, you know, today we're looking at at acting on the MTC uh, resolution, but um, resolved, it says, that the executive director or his designee is authorized to execute any necessary documents and take any additional actions necessary to give effect to this resolution. Uh, to me, that leaves on the table that um, Gateway could become something else, um, if need be, um, that at the VTA level, uh, projects that we've been given schedules and commitments on locally, like um, the, the East Ridge uh, Rail Connector project could could suddenly be um, on the table. Um, and I'm just, you know, I don't know enough about San Mateo to know, you know, whether or not they have just have 200 uh, you know their share of, of the 200 million dollars lying around um, unpledged to anything I, I suspect not having worked in this arena for the last 16 years it's it's very very hard for me to believe that anybody has money out there that's not already pledged to something in fact we hear day in and day out we need more capital money from the operators and more than that we need more operating money um, so what is what if anything can we do to condition our approval today um, on the notion that we don't endorse the cannibalization of, of local projects um, to use the words, uh, let me feedback the words in this resolution uh, to give effect to this resolution. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to disrupt whatever tentative agreements there are with FTA by adding conditions, but I do believe this commission should have the opportunity to revisit um, uh, any any reversal of, of either local pledges or um, our own prior, you know, decisions on, on where money should go, where appropriations have been made in the past. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Cortez, for the question. Um, I think that, you know, what is laid out in the staff report in terms of the 50 million and the three locations of the RTIP that that money would come from is really uh, the intent of what the resolution was trying to set forth. So in particular, the whereas clause that says, whereas future RTIP funds available for programming to regional priority projects under MTC's discretion are sufficient to meet the JPP staff's request. That was meant to link the regional part to the 50 million that's outlined in the memo. And so I think the last part of the um, resolution uh, to give that effect would just be to the point of there still would ha be a requirement to go to the CTC um, and take some resolutions, which um, actually would probably need to come back to you again when we make those changes in the STIP. So um, that's one of the reasons that the FTA didn't feel as secure about STIP funds and one of the reasons that this would be more of a pledge for repayment to San Mateo and Santa Clara because those dollars are sales tax and are really more readily available than STIP funds. But the intent of what the resolution that's before you today uh, is really just the, what is laid out in the memo. And 31 million of the STIP funds are currently unprogrammed. So they are not programmed to any projects. Um, and the 15 million is to Gateway Park. And obviously that is a, a regional priority, but it's not really ready to go right now. So that would be something we'd have to look at in the future if we were to need this STIP capacity in the future. And then the four million from the three uh, Caltrain counties would be 1.3 million of their STIP capacity each. So um, that would be something that we'd have to work with them on if we needed the money. Okay. Again, um, because I, you know, having been here a number of years, and I, I have a, a high degree of trust um, for that combination you're referring to of, of a transmittal um, coming from uh, MTC administration or executive director and combined with a resolution I, I could say okay I can look at both of those together and come up with the certainty that I'm looking for um, and I think that's basically what you're saying the intent is in is in the transmittal memo even though the resolution isn't project specific as to where we're going to go get the money as in Gateway Park or, or whatever in these other areas and, and I'm just looking at if you look at the second page of the letter from um, from the agencies, from Tilly Chang, Jim Hartnett, Nuria Fernandez, and, and Steve signed on to it as well, uh, our executive director. W when you look at 
VTA, for example, it says commitment 50 million, um, 65 million from Measure B, uh, and then it's just it's to show needed capacity to FTA. There is no corresponding memo that I know of or transmittal that says where that where the takeaway is. Uh, measure B, uh, just like um, all previous and all subsequent local sales tax measures have have already pledged that money somewhere else. And, and here, you know, I appreciate the fact that MTC is being candid and honest and saying and upfront and saying, look, here's where we would go get it from. It does involve some degree of, of defunding or reimbursement from from uh, agency partners. That information is not available to my knowledge. Again, I can speak more um, concretely as to VTA than I can to um, uh, to San Mateo or San Francisco because I'm not, I guess San Francisco is still up in the air. But I, I'm just looking for some language so we can move forward that says that um, that we're not endorsing um, the the decommissioning or defunding of projects in those jurisdictions in order to come up with these dollars, um, and um, because I think I think if we do that, if we don't do that, I think what we're telling FTA, and I'm understanding that we're we're we are very um, very much being looked to based on your comments by FTA as an honest partner in this. And, and I don't want MTC to be endorsing proposals to FTA that somebody later goes back to FTA and notifies them that basically, you, you know, MTC endorsed a scheme here that's double pledging money, that's pledging money that's already committed to, to other projects. Um, I, I think that's exactly the opposite of what they're looking for based on your comments and based on their concerns about STIP funding. So, so how, how, can we, how can we put a switch in the tracks here to say that um, this is all uh, contingent upon the commission uh, having an opportunity to uh, revisit its contribution if um, if local projects are decommissioned. Um, let me let me put that out there for cons consideration and turn to other commissioners here who who would like to be recognized. Uh, Commissioner Sperry. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. You know, I, I have some of the same concerns, but, you know, most of us sitting around this table ought to be concerned about the $31 million unprogrammed balance. I do support this proposal. You know, I think this is one more example of how MTC addresses an issue that's been before this commission for probably 30 years. We've been talking about this electrification. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like the Bay Bridge Doyle Drive and so forth, where we've had to do some very creative things. You know, I, I would certainly hope that... It, and, and, you know, I'm not sure when we talk about the contingency and oversight of the control measures, I, I'm certainly hoping our staff is going to have some oversight in how this project is managed or this funding. And so, uh, you know, on the contingency, I would hate to see it going for, like, landscape and something like that to where we have these cost overruns and things that re really weren't fundamental to the project. And uh, I would hope that we would prioritize that if there's a $4 million uh, overrun that comes from that the San Francisco San Mateo Santa Clara share and then uh, the 15 million dollar would be next and I think that would be a, a fair uh, you know approach and give some protection to the issue that the chairman's talking about but I do agree that if, if we're going to defund any specific programs it should or projects it should come back to the uh, commission and I, I didn't think of that what you're raising, but I think it's an important issue. But the $31 million is unprogrammed, so there's no projects affiliated with that. So, And that's the, the, the amount I'm sure everybody sitting around this room is concerned about. And so, uh, you know, I, I do think the issue that's being raised uh, does need to be addressed in some fashion. Uh, comments, uh, questions from other commissioners? Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Hager. You know, I, I just want to say that I, you know, associate myself with uh, Commissioner Sparing's comments. Um, one of the things that I leaned over to, to Commissioner Sparing and said, well, first of all, let me state this. I support the project, and I support what MTC is doing, and I think it's important that we all respond in a regional nature. You know, I mean, you know, when I look at this, and the first thing I said to Alex when I talked to her the other day, well, well, this $31 million is... Alameda and Contra Costa's money. It's the first thing I said to her, and and that's really not true. I mean, it's it's the region's money, 
and and I think we we have to, it's important that when we act as commissioners and we we need to understand this that we do what's best for the region at the time and um, I think at this time this is what's best for the region um, but I, I am I personally am concerned that um, when you set these contingencies out there somehow they get spent every time and my main concern is that what and this goes along when I leaned over to Commissioner Sparin and I did say you know uh, you know I'm concerned that all of a sudden you know this this money's going to get gobbled up so what what assurance do I have that we are able to keep an oversight on this what assurance do I have that MTC um, will be involved in maybe even in the expenditure of this money is there a way that there's um, something in the motion that basically says if they're going to spend this money it's got to come back through MTC for approval um, is there something we can do is there something we can do there that's that's a question yep. of staff I understand Alex I think that the motion could certainly include um, you know something to staff that you want us to take a greater you know cost oversight role and you know we have in the past um, used our consultants to do some co cost oversight on projects um, I think it would need to be sort of proactive at the sort of front end not sort of at the point where we might need this money because that would be at the very end and we hope to not ever need this 200 million as it's already you know uh, there's already a 20 percent contingency that before you get to this money so um, I think if that's something that the Commission wanted, we could um, work with the partners on how to fashion uh, that in addition to uh, this contingent commitment. Well, that would certainly be my desire is that you, that MTC staff remains very involved in this. I, I would not want to see this turn into another Transbay terminal, to be very honest with you, um, in which we're starting to have hearings about cost overruns and, and things like that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just didn't get my. I was just looking for an answer about prioritizing. I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. The, that contingency. I mean, you know, for me, I, I wouldn't want to see it come out of the 31 million, the, the discretionary portion, as I see it. I'd rather see if if there's a four million dollar call on this money, it comes from those three counties first. And so I, you know, that's a concern that I have. I don't want it to see it come out of our regional discretionary piece that. As I identify that 31 million, so I'd like staff to kind of respond to that. Um, again, I think when you, you know, if you take up this resolution, you could also give staff direction to that effect. Um, and maybe I would ask Ann Richmond to remind me on the steps with the CTC. I mean, there would, if we enact this, there are further steps that we have to take with the CTC to uh, make this happen, and that would happen in the form of. Uh, when we do the next step uh, so there may be a way in the next step I'm talking out loud and and Ann will tell me if I'm right <laughs> we might be able to put some sort of prioritization to that effect in the next step um, and I'll yeah. see what they end. sure through the chair if I may Ann Richmond um, so the actual um, programming and allocation of these funds to a project and the way this is set up it would be essentially repaying VTA and San Mateo should the funds be needed so it would be programmed to um, a project that we would determine working with those two entities and that that programming and allocation would occur through the CTC in future STIP cycles the next STIP cycle is the 2018 STIP and that discussion will probably kick off later this year and we would be following the normal state process for that so we would be um, adopting STIP guidelines and then priorities through the Commission and presenting those to the state so there would certainly be opportunities at that time to revisit or to um, further solidify or document any priorities that the Commission has related to those funds yeah, let me just ask a follow-up question, Commissioner, on the Commissioner's experience issue. It's more of a legal issue. I know that there's a prior resolution that calls for equal, equal funding. It's cited in, in this packet, um, and many of us were here when that was adopted, equal contributions. I know you talked about that in your presentation. Does 
uh, I, don't, I don't have a philosoph- personally have a philosophical problem as as one vote here with what Commissioner Spearing is saying is that the drawdown on the contingency should start with the local operators and then work its way to the MTC share, if you will, um, or that that it should be prorated, the cost should be prorated, so to speak, that way. I don't know if that's consistent with the agreement that's already on the books, uh, the contract that we already have. With the, with the or MOU that we already have with the agencies, um, and uh, again, I'm not arguing against the idea. I just I want to make sure if we incorporate that into a, a motion that it can be um, that it's a vi- it's a viable thing to do. I suppose you can always come back to us later and tell us if there's legal obstacles. But I want to make sure the mo- either way, I want to make sure the motion is framed properly. That's all. My recollection of the 2016 MOU is that it stated that if there were further cost overruns or revenue needs for the project, that the funding partners would uh, reconvene and discuss how to address those. So, so, we, so we would have the right then. We're reconvening today, essentially. On, that's our, our part of the reconvening. We have resolutions from the other partners. So it sounds like it's reasonable for us to say... Um, we want it. We want the uh, the dollars, the drawdown on the dollars to um, uh, to avoid the 31 million is what I really um, what I'm really hearing. You want the 31 million dollars of regional money to be the last dollars on the table on on the contingency drawdown. That's correct. I want it included, but I, I would like to see it in the last drawdown. And, you know, and I think Anne's response satisfied my concerns, Mr. Chairman, because I think this commission will have the ability to control that. Uh, yes, Julie, I'm sorry. Commissioner, Commissioner Pierce. Thank you. Um, I think what I'm hearing, and I, I need confirmation from staff, is that this summary table, um, which is on page two of the letter from the joint agencies, um, is indicating that some of this money is coming from Measure A and Measure B, just to show the capacity, if I heard you correctly, you said that if we actually get to the point of needing some of that money, we will revisit STIP money for that instead of from the measure money? Is that what you said? So, so the idea um, at the end, if all 200 was needed beyond the current funding plan, would that it would be four equal shares. Uh, San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Clara, and MTC, so 50 million each. However, um, FTA and their financial oversight consultant was concerned about the STIP um, in that, as many of you know, the STIP does not, you know, have a lot of money right now, so wanted um, sort of security of another type of money. And so that is why San Mateo and Santa Clara took an action to show more sales tax, but our action today, if it goes forward, and San Francisco's action would show that sort of we're all in this together and that we'd have to work on an agreement to make sure that Santa Clara and San Mateo would not have to contribute more than $50 million each in the end. Uh, I appreciate what staff is saying, but I, I am also sympathetic as another sales tech as agency to the concerns that our chair has raised. and. I think overall, I, I agree with that we need more oversight to begin with um, as, as a contributing partner on this project to making sure we don't need this contingency money at all. Um, that would be the ideal. And if that means that we need to be a little more assertive up front about um, overseeing the expenditure of the funds that have already been committed, then we need to do that sooner than later. And so, uh, and then come back to us on a regular basis and let us know how we're doing and hopefully we can avoid needing any of this. I understand the overly cautious approach that is being required by FTA, but I really would hope that we can avoid even dipping into this, but I sure don't want to have to deprogram local agency funds either. Uh, Yes, uh, Commissioner Ducevernazzi. Yes, um, I would just like to echo your concerns. I thank you for bringing that up because time and again I've seen projects started and then stalled for 
funding being pulled to go elsewhere. So, so I think that is very important. And Julie, I like what you said. If we have it under control to begin with, then it's not even an issue. So, and I know we need to do it because that project needs to keep going forward. But, but certainly there is a major concern. So, thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, perhaps a way to deal with this in our own resolution, which is the one thing we have control over, uh, Resolution 4267, is just to um, to modify the delegation to indicate that the the, the delegation has, and I go look to council for the appropriate wording, but the, the, to condition the delegation on um, on. Um, on the notion that no local projects would, would be uh, defunded as a result of of this increase in the in the contingent um, in the contingency fund of this action. In other words, um, let me see if I can say state that more clearly. Yeah, that the executive director as his designee is authorized to execute any necessary documents, take any additional actions necessary to give effect to this resolution, um, so long as um, uh, local pro projects are not being defunded as a result of this joint action. Ch Chair Cortez, can I just ask a clarification of the intent of that? Are you because when you started talking, you seemed very concerned about the VTA action. So I'm trying to understand whether, if you put it at the end where you're putting it, it seems specific to the action that MTC would take with respect to our 50 million, which, as we talked about, would relate to that 31 million unprogrammed, the 15 million Gateway Park, which I think you could argue probably isn't a local project. And then, but then the 4 million from the San Francisco, Santa Clara, and San Francisco stip shares. You know, depending on the time when we get there, there may be a local project in the STIP that may not be as big of a priority that would have to be defunded. You know, and again, that would be subject to a lot more discussion. But I think that I'm a little concerned that it makes it hard to carry out this resolution. But so it's that's not one hard. point. You but just then come, all I'm saying <laughs> is you come back to us and tell us that, and we vote on it. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying I'm saying the executive director can't make that call on his own. Okay, so is it specific to that, or are you also um, speaking to the 50 million from the other agencies? Because they may have to, you know, they may be, they, you know, as part of their action, they may have, and I don't know which one defunded a project that, you know, I don't think they did, but I just, uh, I don't want to, to do something that sort of unravels the actions that the other agencies took or makes ours um, unable to be implemented. So I guess are are you speaking to the 50 million of MTC? Yeah, I I can't or? control what the local agencies okay. do, and I'm quite that, sure that they then. wouldn't put defunding okay. of local projects in the resolutions because they would have never gotten the resolutions adopted okay. in time to do this. So it's specific. So they'd to still the 50 be having million. a big argument about it at, at the local level. So they've been conveniently silent about where this money is coming from at the local level. And again, I I don't think it's any trade secret that there is no extra money in these local measures. There, there never was, there never has been. If anything, with the sales tax decline in the last two recessions, everybody's a couple billion dollars behind the eight ball. So where they're coming up with this money, I don't know. Um, but if it, if it is going to defeat people's expectations locally about projects that have already been committed to, um, then I think we should have the right to revisit um, the funding of, of, of our resolution. That's what I'm saying. Um, they can, I can't tell them not to do that from here. I can, I can encourage them not to do it, but we can't legislate anything that has to do with local control at, at that level. As I understand it, those are local sales tax measures. But what we can say is that our money is conditioned upon um, that, that our executive director has the authority to proceed so long as um, no local projects are are defunded. If they are, it would require the executive director to come back here and talk to us about it. And I think that keeps some pressure on the locals to to be honest about this. Thank you, um, Council. Um, so, if I can just offer the following to address your concern, um, Mr. Chair, and staff's concern. Yeah. 
Um, in this penult penultimate resolved clause, um, we can add your language so long as local projects not be defunded as a result of, of the action without returning to the commission for approval. So just that addresses courteous. your concern and it's just subject to revisiting by the commission at that time. Yeah, I don't want to confuse things, though, Council. I understand you're adding those extra words just to clarify that we're really talking about the delegation being limited and coming back here. We don't, we won't likely have, we may not have approval over those projects. So the language just needs to be clear that what we're talking about is approval to giving effect to this resolution. Any, 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 any funding. Uh, that's still outstanding would be subject to this commission uh, revisiting what happened locally. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman what, you know, I'm more concerned about this 50 million, and I, I think we just add languages that says if any program, any project is being defunded because of the call on this 50 million, the executive director reports back to this commission. I, I, I'm I, I want to be very cautious that we're not micromanaging th these jurisdictions. I mean, San Francisco, San Mateo, and Santa Clara, they may decide to, you know, deprogram a project. And I don't want to, you know, that's at their prerogative. And so I, I agree with your concern, but I, I think that if we had language in that just says the executive, if any project is being deprogrammed because of the call on this money, that the executive director reports back to this board, and then we can decide. Yeah, but I... I I understand where you're coming from, but I don't think the causation is stated correctly there. The, the defunding would not be as a result of R50 million. If anything, R50 million would help them avoid defunding projects. The defunding would be as a result of this concerted action, yeah, okay. this joint okay. action. No, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, they're, they're, we're asked to be a partner in a joint action to put up $200 million. And I'm saying that's fine with me. You know, to the tune of $50 million is our partnership share, so long as the other partners aren't defunding local projects. If they do, I, I would like um, that news to come back to the commission. Um, I'd like to keep that out of the – I'd like to keep the delegation limited to, to, that, to that effect. That's all. And, and I think maybe I'm micromanaging the legal language. It's fine. I just want to make sure there's no confusion about, uh, about what we're doing here. But I, I – I, I would concede that uh, our council is uh, a superior uh, legal wordsmith uh, to me in this one. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I understand the concern that's being raised. One question to your staff. If this is a requirement of FDA for full funding, would a condition that has to come back for another approval undermine that requirement? Well, I've been thinking a lot about that question, <laughs> um, and that's why I have this look on my face. Um, they, they had reviewed this resolution, you know, as ac exactly as it was written. Um, that said, uh, the FTA also, because of the concern on the STIP funds, is really relying a lot on the San Mateo and Santa Clara resolutions for their actions. So a lot of this resolution is to give comfort to the four parties in the region. And also, I think, Commissioner Kiertezzi, to your point, to make sure that San Mateo and Santa Clara don't have to defund projects because they're putting in more than $50 million. So I think the question comes down to whether this change fundamentally changes the commitment to our partners in the region. And I'm not an attorney, so I'm just having a hard time figuring that up, out sitting here right now today. But I think for FTA's purposes, I think we're okay. Okay. Any, any other questions or comments? Uh, yes, Commissioner uh, Joseph, Joseph um, Wits. <laughs> Got the, um, I, 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 I want to also associate myself with the comments made by Commissioners Pierce Haggerty and Spearing about cost overruns. And I don't quite know how this commission works. My first meeting, is that the type of thing where you would then, staff would come back and sort of write a memo to the board about what actions are being taken to kind of get ahead of cost overruns? Because just because these are big projects doesn't mean they need to be big cost overruns. I, I think often how it works is you would direct staff to, um, you know, come back to you with sort of what is our oversight, cost oversight strategy going to be. And often for other projects, we've actually 
you know, hired a consultant to do certain, uh, whether it be a study or in this case maybe it's more of an ongoing review. Um, so we'd have to come back to you if you direct us to do that on exactly what would make most sense in that regard. I, I defer to my more senior colleagues on this one, but that would certainly be something that Just I would be supportive of. Okay, it, maybe we can entertain a motion, yeah. um, and I'm hoping that, hoping that it would incorporate the language um, our county. Our yes, I'd like to include that language, but I also would like to include language that says MTC would develop an oversight process and report back to the commission, so we we understand how the money. So the mo the mo and, and it would include the language, and if the uh, attorney could uh, give us the language again. Yes. Uh, I'm going to modify it slightly, um, Mr. Chair, to to re uh, remove some ambiguity you were concerned about. So in the in the penultimate clause of the resolution, it would read, resolve that the executive director or his designee is authorized to execute any necessary documents and to take any additional actions necessary to give effect to this resolution, so long as local projects not be defunded as a result of this joint action, action with with the other with with SMCTA slash SMCTD comma VTA and either SFMTA or the San Francisco County Transportation Authority comma without first returning to the commission. I'm satisfied with that. If the maker of the motion is that would be certainly that would be uh, part of the motion, and then, you know, staff, you're in the memo you talk about being optimistic about existing project contingency and cost control measures. So, I would like to have some oversight on that that issue, and so that would be included in the motion. So would that be for uh, staff to bring back a a structure, a framework for for ongoing oversight. Thank you. Any other clarifications? Uh, we have a motion by Spearing, second by Pierce. Um, Commissioner Pierce, did you want to comment? Uh, any other comments? Okay, uh, all in, uh, we do have speakers on the item, I'm sorry. Maybe we should hear from them. Uh, Roland LeBron, April Chan, and Scott Lane. We have a couple minutes each to address the commission. Thank you, Supervisor Cortese. So to your point, you're indeed right. Is that a county that cannot balance a $1.3 billion budget cannot possibly have $135 million to play with. As a matter of fact, this sales tax revenue went up by $400,000 into 2016. To your second point, we have $300 million for increased Caltrain capacity in Measure B. However, this project decreases Caltrain capacity. And to your point, um, Supervisor Hegarty, absolutely, they need this $400 million. And the reason they need it is because the FDA know that after, so we're going to spend $2.5 billion and lose 10% capacity after adding a train. And the FDA know they have to exercise a $400 million option to double the number of EMUs to make up for this loss of capacity. So that $400 million, they are counting for it. But to add insult to injury, you're being asked to continue supporting this mess because apparently we would be saving money by locking in contracts that should not have been awarded in the first place. So in closing, my recommendation to this commission is to follow the UK's lead with being presented with the exact same thing, okay, which is basically is blackmail. And, and do this regardless of what happens to the FFGA, is to cancel these contracts put new management in place and refocus on resolving real critical regional issues such as the downtown extension, a new Transbay tunnel. And when all that's done, cap it all off with Caltrain electrification. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your comments. Next speaker, please.
express our Caltrain's appreciation for the commission to call a special meeting on this very critical item. Uh, this is something that brought to our attention very late in the game um, that the, uh, the, the measures that we have put in place, they still want this additional assurance and they want actually board action on this. So I really appreciate this. Um, there's a couple of things I want to mention about the, the, the contingency that we have included. Um, this is two contracts that the Caltrain board had already um, approved uh, during the summer of 2016. Uh, we are working on our own uh, right of way. Uh, these are contracts that we have locked in the price. Uh, so we're pretty uh, assured about the, uh, the confidence in terms of how we're able to you know, move this project forward. The other thing I wanted to mention, I, I heard quite a bit in terms of uh, oversight. Um, as part of the, uh, the, the agreement, the number of funding partners that, that we have on this project, including MTC, San Mateo, Santa Clara, San Francisco, and also the High Speed Rail Authority, uh, we have put together a project oversight committee. Um, they get to review, uh, staff get to participate on a regular basis how we're delivering this project, and they get to ask questions. So I want to assure you that uh, MTC staff are, are included in that process as well. Um, I think Finally, the other thing, I, I know there was a, quite a bit of discussion about how we're going to divvy up if we ever need to use this $200 million. I think it goes back to a funding agreement, uh, MOU supplement, that this board um, has approved back in the summer of uh, 2016, a couple of months earlier. Uh, we put in a place a process. If we need any more money than the $1.98 billion that have been approved for this project, including the $316 million, um, we want to come back together. It's not just the, the four partners that have been mentioned. We want to actually have the state, the high-speed rail authority at the table to talk about how we, can put, you know, how we may need to, to fund any additional costs. So with that, I want to thank you for your, uh, your uh, action on this. Okay, thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Um, Scott Lane, your turn. Um, key question, did everybody get this from Roland LeBrun? Hopefully everybody got this document. I really defer to Roland on this. Um, I know he's a multi-generational train guy from the UK. I know he's talked about things like this for the last two years to MTC. I believe he raised a red flag in June of this year that this was coming. So I'm not a train guy, I ride the trains, but I know if there's a, there's a, a sign mark with a light, we should have paid more attention to that in June. So I, if there's any way you can have a dialogue with Roland, I know you don't do that normally. Uh, I would suggest that if there's a way that you can pony up the 50 million to do a stopgap and then look to see what are we doing. Really, I mean, Roland is an excellent resource. I really cannot stress that enough. So I guess my concern is, A, we don't want to lose the FTA funding. I get that. But are we having, because, let me back up. The problem with Caltrain, as I see it, is they never had enough funding. And most agencies, we always are making the wrong decisions or not the best decisions because we're having to do the best what we can with a tenth of what we probably should have, right? So the question that I'm inviting you to have a conversation with Roland about at a future after you approve this, because I'm assuming this is going to be approved unanimously, is are the contracts right? Are we saving these contracts only to be wasting something like a half a billion or a billion dollars? Yes, it might be that bad. The contracts might be that bad. Look at the letter. Look at how many people Caltrain doesn't have for staff. There are serious issues because, and I love Caltrain, don't get me wrong, I like BART. But when you underfund agencies this drastically, this is where you need to go to the governor and say, this is what happens. We, don't, we aren't necessarily making the best decisions. So whatever MTC does, this could put the onus on, yes, we approve this. And I appreciate Supervisor Cortese, because to get Barton, Santa Clara County, we had to lose daily ridership for, Cal for Eastridge uh, Light Rail. And then the, uh, we also lost $69 million double tracking for uh, Caltrain on the South Bay. So Thank there you, are Scott. issues when you change things up. Thank you, Scott. We'll get back to you in a second here on public comment. Um, uh, now we take up the motion. Um, the motion was uh, sparing second by Pierce. Again, any further comment? All in favor signify by aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Um, that carries unanimously. Um, thank you all of you for the hard work, scrambling, and tr keeping all these partners together and um, doing it on a timely basis so we don't lose our opportunity. We appreciate that um, here. Um, we'll move on to item six, which is public comment other business. Any other business that needs to be brought up by members of the commission, 
Um, public comment is Scott Lane. Uh, come on back up, Scott. Have a couple more minutes to speak. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you again. once again. Uh, beg my indulgence here. Uh, I want to. Uh, it's somewhat related to this. It's somewhat related to the the um, the issue with with funding uh, for the Santa Monica Cuna Creek Trail. Uh, time and again with VTA, for example, I use VTA. I'm not harping on them because I'm South Bay. I know VTA. I don't know San Mateo County. Um, we the, things are being reallocated, or repurposed. Something that I often say in the MTC pack is how can we get clawback provisions in here? How can we get specific language that if they repurpose these funds and reallocate these funds that we can do something about it? I'm not about a stick, I'm about a carrot, but if things are being defunded, and this is what always happens, right? To get this, you have to change that. There has to be some uh, mechanism um, to say that if, when they decide this, if I'm going to ignore my BPAC, which is certainly VTA's right in the Santa Monica uh, Creek Trail, um, that you know, there might be consequences. I guess that's really what I'm getting at. And anything that, v, that MTC can do to be an active, I like what I heard today, an active participant on the front end to make sure that proper planning and proper procedures are in place would stop things. The issue with the stack trail was because they did things completely backwards on that. Um, even though I've been trying to get this open for two years, they, they go ahead and, and the city staff does something without the mayor even signing on, without the city council signing on, without the BPAC signing on. So I think when, when, when policies and procedures as MTC's role is to make sure we distribute money correctly, that relies on the process at each municipality and congestion management agency in each city being done correctly. And so I guess I'm thinking for this and everything else, how do we make sure that when policies and procedures aren't followed correctly, that there's some sort of clawback or some sort of consequences. I don't mean that as a negative. I'm just thinking as a proactive measure, they'll make sure they dot the I's and cross the T's. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, that concludes um, the business on our meeting agenda today. We'll be adjourned to our next regular meeting of the commission, which is uh, currently scheduled for Wednesday, January 25th, 2017 at 9.35 a.m. Uh, right here in this boardroom. Thank you all.